Good morning to all of you as we join together to worship God. Welcome to you out there in Facebook land or YouTube or however it is that you may be viewing us here today. Uh, just a, a few announcements is that uh, today after the service uh, at 11 a.m. we will have a kind of a half an hour for you to join with others on our Zoom fellowship time. If you'd like to do that, you should have gotten a uh, some information on how to join in through your email, and please uh, just do so. If you can make it just for a couple of minutes, that would be just perfect. Uh, also, this coming week, we will uh, have our lawn chair faith discussion on Wednesday, weather permitting. It's getting to that time of year where weather may uh, may kind of interrupt things. Uh, so, but if you uh, if it's good and everything, then uh, hopefully you can join us for that time. Uh, next Sunday, we will also be offering an alternative of in-person worship following safety practices. That's on the 25th. So those of you who may be interested in that, uh, please make note. And that is next Sunday. So these and other announcements that you may also find on Facebook, Facebook, Facebook or through emails, uh, please, uh, please make note of those as we uh, join together here this morning to worship God. Let us take this time to prepare our hearts and minds to do that. The psalmist wrote in Psalm 99 that the Lord is great in Zion. He is exalted over all the nations. So let us worship God as we join now in prayer. Let us pray. 
Loving God, we thank you again for the day that you have given. And we also take special time, O oh God, to thank you for the changing of the seasons. As we pray, O oh God, we, we see within us the nature of the trees that change colors. And we see, O oh God, within our hearts of how we change as well over time. And we experience a time that has indeed brought much change in our lives. And yet as we gather together to worship you, O oh God, we experience your love, your peace, your joy, and your hope that does not change. And we come to worship you in truth and in peace. And so as we come, O oh God, be with us. May this time that we worship you together be a time of renewal. And as we come together, O oh God, during this special moment of worship today, wherever we may be, we are also made aware of where we have fallen short of your tremendous glory, where we have sinned against you and neighbor, where we have broken covenant and relationship. And so we pray and ask, O oh God, your forgiveness and your healing presence. As we pray this, O oh God, we are yet reminded again of the glorious grace and mercy that you offer. And so in that we can continue to rejoice that in you and in the name and the gift of your son, we are indeed forgiven. And so again, be with us during this time of worship as we pray in his name. Amen.
Thank you, Deanna. Thank you, Diana, for sharing this morning's music. Our reading of scripture, we first look to the Old Testament, and this is from the book of Exodus. I'll be reading from chapter 33, verse 12 through verse 23. Hear now the word of God. Moses said to the Lord, See, you have said to me, Bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. Now, if I have found favor in your sight, show me your ways so that I may know you and find favor in your sight. Consider, too, that this nation is your people. He said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. And he said to him, If your presence will not go, do not carry us up from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight, I and your people, unless you go with us? In this way we shall be distinct, I and your people, from every people on the face of the earth. And the Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing that you have asked. For you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. And Moses said, Show me your glory, I pray. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and will proclaim before you the name, the Lord. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. But, he said, you cannot see my face, for no one shall see me and live. And the Lord continued, See, there is a place by me where you shall stand on the rock, and while my glory passes, I will put you in a cleft of the rock, and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. Amen. And from the New Testament, we turn to Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians. This is from chapter 1, verses 1 through 10. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love, and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, beloved by God, that he has chosen you, because our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction, just as you know what kind of persons we prove to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, for in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy, inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all believers in Macedonia and Achaia. For the word of the Lord has, found, has sounded forth from you not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions... Report about us what kind of welcome we had among you and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God and to wait for his son from heaven whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. And this is the reading of scripture. May God bless us with understanding upon hearing God's word. Amen. Let me ask you a question. How many of you remember, I'm not going to see any hands, I know, but remember the name of your um, first grade teacher? Okay. Um, how about the name of the bank teller you see most often or experience most often? Or, now this may be a long time back, who knows, or the last person who checked you out, an actual human being, mind you, in a store? It's a little harder. Some may be easier than others. But a person's name 
is to him or her the sweetest sound in any language. That was something that was said by a guy by the name of Dale Carnegie. But many of us, we struggle to remember the name. What do we say? We say things like, I remember their face, but I forget their name. Now, forgetting or failing to know someone's name, it can end up being a real disconnect and create a real kind of, yeah, we know this term from too often lately, social distance between people. And, and perhaps we have all felt the sting of knowing someone that we have met before, knowing them well, someone that we maybe respect and we admire, and uh, you're walking down a hall and they just blow right past you. They don't, they, don't, they don't say a word. They don't give a second look and they most certainly don't seem to know your name. So if Dale Carnegie is right, then the opposite may very well be true too. Not hearing our name could very well be the loudest and most discouraging silence in any language. No one wants to be called, hey you, right? Now, the truth is, learning names can, can be very well be a discipline. And some people have learned how to do that better than others. It can require uh, being fully present, they say, when you are with the other person. And there's some techniques that people use for retaining a person's name, including when you hear their name, you repeat it right away in a sentence. My name is Bob. Oh, hello, Bob. That's one of the ways. You can, in your own head, spell it out. B-O-B, -B, that's pretty easy. Maybe you'll associate the name with something about the person, and that can be good or bad, so, but... But when you know someone's name, then you are on the fast track of really getting to know them. And you are also on the track of, of getting to be known by them, too. And that brings us to a little bit of what we hear from Exodus. Because as Moses, as Moses meets with God, it's meant not just here, but throughout the whole Exodus story, it, it's clear that there's this kind of, there's this little imbalance that's at work here. This relationship is not a real equal one. I mean, God is God, after all. And, uh, and Moses, well, Moses is just a human being, frail human being. And yet Moses has this intimacy with God that is completely unique in the Old Testament. And as the writer of Exodus put it, God spoke to Moses face to face as one speaks to a friend. Matter of fact, Moses is so familiar with God by this particular point in what we've heard today to actually be able to remind God of God's promises. Hey, God, remember saying this? You, you said to me, bring up this people. But here's the thing. You haven't told me with whom you're going to send with me. Yet, yet you said... I know you by name, that you found favor in my sight, that consider this nation too as your people. Who are you going to send to help me? This is, the, this, is, this is the first of five times that we hear that Moses has found favor in God's eyes in, in verses 12 through 17. And, it's, and twice that we read that God knows Moses by name. And those, those are the phrases that, ref, that well, they, they do. They refer to, to the choice of Moses to be the leader of Israel. That's true. But there are also these, these phrases, these terms of real endearment, name, and favor. 
And Moses, Moses himself, he doesn't treat the people like a, that, 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 that he's leading, like some nameless, faceless horde. He knows them. And so what he does here is he uses God's recognition of Moses' own name, that relationship, as a kind of a capital, if you will, for what comes next. And again, Moses asked God for some things. God, are you going to continue traveling with the Israelites on their journey through the wilderness to the promised land. Because Moses knows this. Again, Moses can't do it by himself. And so are you going to be with your people or not? And what is God's response here? Well, God's response is to give Moses the assurance that he is actually looking for. God has found favor in Moses. God, yes, knows Moses by name saying that I am with you all the way. All the way. Not just the beginning, not just a portion of the middle, but through the whole thing. And what an assurance that is for Moses. And what an assurance that is for us, too. When we find ourselves in the wilderness times of life, and we find out that God is with us, not just part of the way, all the way. That's good news for us. It was good news for Moses. And at this particular point, Moses decides to jump in a little deeper. And says, God, will you show me your glory? Now, now we, we may think, you know, Moses, that's kind of a strange question coming from you because you've obviously seen God's glory before. I mean, God's heard, I mean, Moses has heard to God talking has witnessed God's glory. Think burning bush, for example. Moses communicated with God directly. This seems to be something else. This seems to be that Moses now wants to know God more personally. To know more of God's character. To know what, more of God's person. And how does God respond here? Well, the response is not to fulfill Moses' request in full, but instead promises to show Moses, get this, God's goodness. That's what you're going to get to see now. You're going to get to know me. The goodness that God ends up revealing is in many ways even more impressive, impressive than another display of glory. Moses now will be given an opportunity to view God's real character. That is the goodness of God. The goodness that God intends as God leads the people away from that wilderness time to the promised land that is ahead. God reveals to Moses that God is at work on behalf of all of God's people and that God is trustworthy and that God is good. Moses and God, they have an interesting relationship. They know each other's names. And it's that kind of connection, that kind of, of partnership that actually ends up saving an entire people. God will go ahead of the Israelites. Moses, who wanted another divine revelation of glory, no, won't get that, but God will only show Moses, as in the scripture says, his back. You will get to see what I've done but not before. That kind of thing shouldn't surprise us. Because if God is out in front of us, if God is out leading us through the wilderness, it's probably his back that the Israelites are going to follow. 
Scripture actually reveals many names for God. But one of the most powerful truths that humans can know is that the God who created this universe knows our names. And that includes the second grade teacher and the bank teller and the checkout person too. What we discover is that we will not be left in the slavery of all that we do wrong, the slavery of sin, the slavery of, uh, of torment, or those things that really hurt our soul. We will not be left there. We won't be left by a God who doesn't even know our names. We won't be left there by a God who is indifferent to us. We won't be abandoned in the wilderness by a God who just simply turns a deaf ear to our suffering. We won't have to navigate our world without a God who knows the way to life and new life. Because God knows your name. Jesus described the intimacy with which God knows us. That even all the proverbial hairs on our heads are numbered. And the flip side of that is this. Is that we know God's name too. Because you see, we have come to know God not merely as a glorious figure whose face we cannot look and still live kind of a relationship. No, we have come to know God, just like Paul came to know God. And that was in the face of Jesus. And that we have learned his name, that we have seen his glory, his glory as a the author of John says, the glory of a as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. And he promises to go ahead of us as well as be with us always. And he is God with a human face. And because of that, we don't have to guess at the goodness of God because we've seen that goodness in person. If God knows our names, then the next place then is we as God's people should make every effort to know the names of others and the strangers and those that we come into contact with now, maybe not their act, but to be in relationship with them. Try to know their name too. To be in relationship with them. And to share what is the goodness of the divine name to them as well. Because as, as you and I, as we know God through Christ, others are going to come to know God through those of us who follow Christ. Because when we take the time to know them by name, that is to value them and to connect with them, then they begin to see a reflection of the God who knows them even more. So, What's in a name? Everything. It is the sweetest sound of any language. All glory be to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And in our affirmation of faith, as followers of Christ, we affirm Jesus is Lord. Let us keep in our prayers today as we gather wherever we are, those who are in need, let us pray for those that are listed in your, on your Facebook page or that you've shared through emails or conversations. We will have a moment of quiet to share those personal concerns as well as the many that now face both our communities, uh, our nation, and the world. Uh, there are natural disasters, there are human-made disasters, uh, all kinds of, uh, of things from which we really find ourselves feeling deeply in the wilderness. Let us pray for them and that God continues to lead us through to what is that promised land and a place of hope and peace. Uh, let us remember them as we join together in prayer. Let us pray now. Lord God, we thank you that you have brought us together wherever we may be in one spirit to worship you. 
And as we join together, O God, in prayer, we pray for the needs of your people, both near and far. They may be members of our family, our friends, our circle that we hang around with. They may be those that are more of acquaintances that maybe we've heard about. Those that we have seen in the news, those who are hurting from natural disasters, those who are hurting from the hands of others. We pray, O oh God, for them today. We pray for those who are sick, for there is much sickness. There is certainly sickness of the body. As we continue, O oh God, to struggle with the pandemic, we are also struggling with other illnesses that have continued during this time. And we pray for your strength, your healing, your wisdom. But there's also healing that is in need of in our, in our minds. For we are sometimes finding ourselves in places of distress, worry, depression, anger, frustration. We pray, O oh God, your healing, that you will lead us to a place of peace. And we also know, O oh God, in this time there is a need for the healing of our spirits. For maybe we have wondered where you are in the midst of it all. But we hear your word, and we know that you are there, and we experience your presence through the gift of your people, and for that we give you our thanks, O oh God. Continue to work your healing presence. And so for the needs that we know around us, the needs in our world, and others that we would like to share with you now in a quiet time, O oh God, we look to you in prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you so much, God, for inviting us to be in prayer together. And we thank you, O oh God, for, for hearing us as we pray. And we also thank you for the opportunity to continue to listen to your word of peace and hope, challenge and care to all of us and each of us, for you know us by name. And we thank you, O oh God, that you again are at work in all of those for whom we pray today and in the life of this world. For in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Let us in our continued response of thanksgiving now take this time to offer our gifts to God, however God has called you to give, whether it is in your time, your talents, or the gifts of your treasures. If you have a financial gift that you would like to share with the church, please do so and mail it to the church at any time. Let us take this time then to make the offering of our life and labor known to God.
us pray. We thank you, God, for the name of hope. We thank you, God, for the name of peace. We thank you, God, for the name of joy. We thank you, God, for the name of love. And we thank you, God, for the name of Jesus. We ask that you bless the gifts that we bring, our lives that we offer, that we may share your name with our community and with the world. For it is in Jesus' name that we pray, and that we pray together now as he has taught us, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Wherever you go, wherever you may be or encountering throughout the week, please remember to share the love of Christ. Share that name of Jesus. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit remain with you now and forevermore. Amen.